Are we working? Oh, okay. Uh, so let's look at some examples of actually using trig in actual some kind of practical um, case. Well, practical inverted commas maybe. Okay, so we've we've already seen um, some uses of using uh, trigonometry to, to measure things. So there's a famous one was when uh, Aristarchus, uh, he set up this kind of situation where he looked at when the moon was at the first quarter and um, he measured the angle between the moon and the sun. And he got this uh, 90, 87, three triangle. And he said, um, well, with a, using some kind of primitive trig, he said, well, if that's the case, uh, then this distance, distance here is around 20 times that distance there. He, he sort of made, he made a triangle and he sort of measured himself. Um, so the sun is, that means the sun is 20 times further away than the moon. And since the moon and the sun kind of line up perfectly when you've got a solar eclipse, they have the same relative size. That means the sun must have in reality a 20 times bigger uh, diameter than the moon. And so, and so that means it's 400 times bigger area and it's like, it means it's 8,000 times bigger. The sun must be 8,000 times bigger than the moon. Okay. Um, we see some problems here because uh, this is not, in reality, it's not 87 degrees. It's actually 89 degrees and 50 minutes. And this is actually just 10 minutes. Um, so that means when you do that, uh, the sun is actually 400 times further away than the moon, right? what's around 93 million miles, and the moon is around quarter of a million miles away, something like that. And so the sun is actually 400 cubed times bigger than the moon. Okay. Uh, it's kind of amazing that they could actually make, do these things even though they were kind of wrong. It's just, you know, problems with measuring the instrument. Um, a much more successful attempt at, at using trig to do something was Aristophanes when he uh, kind of measured the, the world. Uh, and so the idea was that uh, at, a certain, at the same time, the sun shone down a well in Cyrene, it made an angle of a 50th of a circle at Alexandria. Okay. And so if we, the sun is so far away that we can just assume that these light rays are parallel. So if that's the case, then uh, Alexandria must be 1 50th of the circumference of the world away from Cyrene. And since it was 5,000 stadia away, um, the earth has a circumference of 250,000 stadia which is around 40,000 kilometers. And that's not bad, actually. That's a pretty good estimate for the size of the world. Um, you know, we see that there are slight problems that like Cyrene is not actually due, uh, due south of Alexandria, or whatever, but you know, uh, with, the, with the errors that are, that are around, it, it, it gives you okay result. Um, and so this was the, 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 uh, the result that was put into um, Ptolemy's Almagest. Um, but in Ptolemy's geography book, he used a different value. Uh, and there he said that the Earth was only had a circumference of 180,000 stadia. So in geography, geography his, uh, the Earth was a lot smaller than it was in reality. And this was important because Christopher, that was the book that Christopher Columbus read. And so that's why, so if you ever wondered why 
he could possibly think America was India. Uh, it's because he used this value from, uh, from geography. Uh, so he really did believe that when he got to uh, got to the West Indies, that he was in India, and that they really were Indians that he was meeting. So anyway, so that was, that's kind of the thing. So I don't know, would he have sailed there if he'd actually known that there was no way he could reach India from from there? Um, so there's, uh, we've talked about the Caliph uh, al Mamun before. He was uh, one of the early Abbasid Caliphs. Um, he was kind of there when the Islamic empire really was at some kind of height. He was really a really big patron of arts and science and that. And, um, and so one of the things he wanted to do was, you know, uh, test Aristophanes' calculation. And so what he did was he sent guys out into the desert and used a rope and they were supposed to just go pull the rope out until they went one degree uh, of latitude. They were supposed to go directly north or south. Um, because the thing is you can, uh, it's very easy to actually to measure latitude. Uh, all you have to do is wait for it to be noon. When it's noon, you look at what angle the sun makes. And then depending upon what time of year it is, we've got tables for that, you can figure out what your latitude was. So you just need an astrolabe, you shoot the sun back. And so they went out and, um, uh, so how far they actually got, so, so eventually the, the, uh, the agreed on length was 56 and two thirds miles. Of course you can think you've got a rope 56 miles long. <laughs> it's all kinds of problems with that kind of measurement. But anyway, so um, he came, but they actually ended up with a pretty good figure. Okay. So where does Trig come in? Um, so Al Biruni kind of thought of a, a different way to measure the uh, 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 to measure the size of Earth, and uh, I think he was making a joke here because uh, he so he had this famous book on the determination of the coordinates of cities. So I mean, basically, how do you make a map of the world or like a map? So what you basically do is you find places like a city or whatever, and you figure out its latitude and longitude. And that puts you a spot on the map. And then you find, you know, by doing a whole bunch of these, you can, you can find how, you can pinpoint dots on the map, and then, you know, draw in curves for shorelines and things like that. So that's basically how you do a map. And, you know, you get like a little, square of latitude and longitude, and you try and put in what you feel like the Earth looks like. But anyway, Al Biruni says, here's another method for determining the circumference of the Earth. It does not require walking in deserts. So I really do think that's a joke. Okay, and so what he did was, he said he was in India. Uh, when I happened to be living in the port of Mandana in the land of India, I observed an adjacent high mountain standing west of the port a large plain lying south of the mountain. It occurred to me I should examine this method here. So his method is like, if you're on top of something tall, you can measure the dip, which is the angle between horizontal and the horizon. And then by, if you know kind of these things, maybe you can figure out the radius of the, of the world. So you need to measure these things. Okay. So let's see how we did. First, you've got to find the height of the mountain. Okay, so what you do is you make yourself like a big sort of rectangular thing like this. And then on one side, you sort of mark it with um, 
uh, little markings. And so you go at the end of the plain and you look up the mountain and you sight along the lower thing here. So it points at the top of the mountain. And then you've got like a, a little ruler or something that sort of rotates freely and you shoot that to the top of the mountain. Okay. And um, so you see various things. Uh, is we see that, for example, this angle must equal that angle, right? Because they're, these are parallel lines. And so you have a bunch of similar triangles. So this ADT triangle is similar to the DGE triangle, this big triangle here. Um, and then this angle, DGH, this angle here has to equal GEZ, this angle here, right? Because they're both complementary angles. Okay, this, this angle and this angle add up to 90, this angle and this angle add up to 90. Okay, so again, you've got a bunch of similar triangles. And so you can do ease. So, so from this similar triangle, you can find out GE. So you can figure out this distance from here to here using the similar triangles. And uh, with this, these two similar triangles, you can find EZ, which is what you want to find. That's the, just the height of the mountain. And so it's when, when things cancel out, you can see that it's equal to AD times GH divided by AT. Okay. And so straight away, you can see something which is a bit dodgy about this. Right? You're, you're dividing by TA, this distance here. And this is going to be a small distance, right? Because this lines up here. And, and so this is just a parallax you get. So you need a really a honking big board to be able to, to do this kind of kind of accurately. Okay, so you're dividing by a small number. So that makes so any of you who've done numerical analysis, that should make, make you nervous. But anyway, you could you can find the height of the mountain by doing this kind of surveying. So how do you find the, the radius of the earth? So what you do is you go up to the top of the mountain. And so KL is going to be the radius of the Earth. EL is going to be the height of the mountain. So this, of course, is not drawn to scale. You're on top of the mountain, and you've got like an astrolabe, which is one of those, those instruments that you kind of shoot, shoot angles with. You know, you can measure angles with. And you can find this dip angle which is the angle from the horizontal to the horizon. So we measure that angle D. Okay. And so and then we do, then we use the, the sine law. Okay. So for this triangle here, ELO, we have EL over LO equals sine D divided by sine 90 minus D. So if you know the height of the mountain, then you can figure out this distance LO. Um, so then since you know EL and LO, then you know EO, because you just use Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, now TO equals LO, right? Because they're both tangents to this circle. So you know we know ET. So we know the distance from the top of the mountain to the horizon. And then we do stuff with this triangle here. So we have ET over KT is again sine uh, D over sine 90 minus D. So we can solve for KT. So in, all, in theory, all this is doable. Um, okay. So what did Al Biruni find? He found that the height of the mountain was 652 
And then the six immeasurable places were three and 18 cubits. And the dip is 34 minutes. So hopefully this is setting off alarm bells in your head that that is, uh, because if that's true, then sine D to sine 90 minus D is like one to 100 to 101, right? So basically you're, you're, when you go through and solve this, you actually end up multiplying things by 101, right? And um, if it was like 33 minutes, then you'd be multiplying things by 104. So you see that a very small change in D is gonna make a big change to your answer. And you're also using the fact that you know the height of the mountain EL, which also is kind of dodgy. I mean, saying that he's done this to the seconds and cubits, right? and there's 4,000 cubits to a mile, uh, anyway, so he he figures out the radius of the Earth to be around 13 million cubits and uh, the circumference of the world to be around 80 and a half million cubits. And so that gives uh, miles to degree of 55 miles, 53, 15 miles per degree on a meridian using the fact that it's 4,000 years. And of course, this agrees very much with uh, the, the survey of Alma Moon that was done like 200 years earlier. So I find this all a little bit suspicious. <laughs> I mean, he knew the answer and he got the answer, which is, and I, I, I think this is all, this all kind of a bit, so, uh, whatever, but the main thing is like the, the theory behind it is 100% solid. So that by using tree tables, you can do, uh, do this kind of surveying. And so uh, I know if it's gonna work for, for mountains and that, but there you go. And as, I guess as instruments get better, you can, get more and more accuracy, but I don't believe he did this in the 11th century. Okay. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk about today.